Hey, this is Matt. Welcome to the whiteboard. In this video, we will visualize the array, something you already know, like an old friend. You already know how to populate an array using the push method, which pushes items into the end of an array like this. Now, what if you want to delete the last item? You use pop, of course, and the array is one item shorter. What if you want to add an item to the beginning of the array? You use unshift, which shifts the current items forward one place, then puts the new item at zero. If you now use the opposite of unshift, shift, you delete the first item, then shift all the items down one index. What if you want to delete from the middle of an array? You use splice, which always gives you the opportunity to replace the deleted item too. One-to-one -one slices that preserve the position of items are pretty unusual though. Usually you splice multiple items out and shift the remaining items down. Or you splice multiple items in and shift items to the right further right before adding the new items. So I know what you're thinking. We haven't even mentioned the neatest thing about your friend, array access. You give the index, you get the item. This is the superpower of arrays. Not only is it remarkably convenient, it's really, really fast too. In fact, we can access array items in constant time, meaning no matter how big the array is, when we access an item, we get it almost immediately. Why is that? If some kind of looping or linear search was going on in the background, it would take ON time. But it doesn't. Here's how it actually works. The memory in your computer is composed of single bytes and each byte in your RAM has a numerical address. When a program on your computer needs some memory, it takes a series of bytes. And when your program creates an array, something special happens. A whole block of bytes is claimed, and they're divided up equally, so that each item in the array gets the same number of bytes, in this case, two. Now here's the fun part. If we know where an array's first byte is, we know where the first item is, too. And if we want the second item, we can find its memory address two bytes further along. And the third item will be further along by two, two, and so on. This trick is why array access has great performance. It takes just a simple multiplication to locate the item in memory. This peculiar structure, side-by-side -side evenly divided groups of bytes, is the strength of the array. It is also its weakness. Suppose you have an array of fruits here. You shift the lemon away. Now all the remaining items have to be shifted one index down. So every item in the array has been rewritten. That's not a problem for this tiny array, but what if the array has 10,000 fruits? 9,999 items would have to be rewritten, which is a staggering cost. Array shifting is why both insertion and deletion for arrays is ON. If you don't shift, unshift, or splice, you're on solid ground because a pop is O1 and a push is 2. But you have to be careful with pushes. Imagine we keep pushing items into a fruit array. It's fine as long as there's room, but what about this kiwi? Where will it go? If another program or process has claimed the memory just after the fruit array's memory, the whole array will have to be recreated elsewhere. Again, at the cost of ON. The array is going to remain an old friend that you use daily. But like every old friend, he's not right for every occasion. Keep in mind his weaknesses, insertion and deletion. 